What's up everyone? Today we're making our last trek to the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We are actually making our way up from Jupiter, Florida. About a week ago we made our way down to Jupiter and now we're making our way up to the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion before returning to New York. We figured because we're coming through Georgia that we'd stop in and check out the Beasley Knob Badge of Honor Trail. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We've got the Jeep ready to go. I'm going to air down some tires because I've heard this trail actually has some actual obstacles. It is not just a dirt road or a simple go through trail. This one actually should have some obstacles today because we are just by ourselves. We are most likely not going to be doing anything crazy or serious probably stick to maybe just the level one or maybe try the level four but that will probably be it we don't really want to push it because we still have to make the trip to great smoky mountain jeep vision then we have to make the trip from pigeon forge tennessee to new york and i need the jeep to be working so guys let's go air down the tires and we'll go hit the trail So guys, the first section of this trail was actually an access road that gets you from the Beasley Knob sign to the main parking area. The main parking area is definitely big enough for anybody who wants to trailer the rig to the trail. It is also the best location to air down your tires before getting on the trail and for airing them up when you leave the trail. After we pass through the main parking area, we get onto the green trail, which is also rated as a level one trail based on the Badge of Honor trail. This trail system gets you from the main parking area to the more advanced trails that are on this trail system. This trail is the perfect trail for any beginners who are looking to experience off-roading, but are not ready to do anything extreme. This trail consists of mainly a dirt road with a few minor dips and grooves here and there that give you the true off-roading experience for anybody who's looking to learn and gain some confidence. So guys, that was the green trail or the level one. Overall, that was very straightforward. Anybody could really do that. You don't need four wheel drive for that trail. It was just a simple kind of dirt gravel road that goes around some nice bends, some really cool things to look at during that drive, but nothing really challenging. Now what we're gonna do is try out some blue trails or their rated level fours. And we're gonna see how they go. The first thing we have to do is this hill combination right here. And then we'll move on to see what else this trail has to offer. As soon as we got onto the blue trail, we noticed that the level of the obstacle definitely increased right away. This trail consisted of a bunch of hill climbs, a few areas where you can flex in and out and a lot of camber areas. You had to go through the trees. You had to drive through long sections of really nice scenery. It was a really fun trail. The hardest section of this trail or the hardest obstacle that this trail mentions is a rock climb. And I will show you guys that when we get to it. But overall, this trail was not that difficult and definitely a trail that you could do by yourself. Though I don't recommend that you do the trail by yourself. It's always recommended that you do bring someone along with you because in the event that something happens, at least you'll have someone to help you get out of your sticky situation.
here is the rock obstacle that they stated is the hardest obstacle in this section of the trail. But overall, guys, it wasn't that bad. If you had a stock Jeep with a stock lift and stock tires, it might be a little bit challenging and you might just have to pick the right line. But for someone with 38s and a three and a half inch lift, this was not a problem at all. And guys, for me, this was the second rock obstacle that I've experienced. The first one was on Peter Mills. And so for this one, I was pretty confident that Jeep would have no problem getting up it. So guys, we are just over halfway through the blue trail on Beasley Knob, and I have to say it's pretty cool. Lisa, where are we at right now? We're, we're out on that. Blue Rock Overlook on top of Rattlesnake Hill. Okay, this is pretty cool. The views are really, really nice. Right now we're stopping to give Wrangler some water, let him pee, let him do his stuff, and enjoying the view. It is amazing. It's kind of hard to see from here, but you can see it through the trees. So we've got about 2.6 kilometers left or something like that. So it's mostly downhill. There's been a few challenging parts or not challenging, but new to me. You know, I'm not used to rocks. So going over a few of the rocks has been a lot of fun. Um, and I look forward to seeing what's on the end on the way down. I'm not sure if it's going to be harder or easier, but so far this has been a lot of fun. This is the perfect level. Greens have been a little boring. All the other trails, Peter Mills, um tread lightly those were just very very simple trails this one has been a lot of fun a lot of inclines dips off cambers or cambers like lots of things going on so let's go hit the remaining of the trail and then we'll wrap this video up So after we visited the overlook, the next part of the trail changed a little bit because instead of going uphill, 
we were mainly going downhill. There was a few sections that did go up here and there, but most of it was going down. So it was a little different. Most of the time we were on our brakes going down obstacles versus being on the gas to climb them. So it was slightly different, but it was still a lot of fun. Once we got to the end of this trail, we were following the directions, which told us to go down a certain section of trail to get to the exit.
as we went down this trail, we noticed the obstacle was starting to get a little bit harder and there was no way that this was the exit. So I went ahead and checked out what was coming and what I noticed was the trail was definitely starting to get a lot harder. So what we went ahead and did is looked at the app to figure out where we were. Unfortunately, we were struggling with a little bit of signal in this location, so it took us a bit of time to figure it out. But we did figure out we were not on the exit and we were on another trail. And because this trail was super tight, what we decided to try and do was reverse up the way we came down. But as we did this, we learned this was actually really challenging to do. It is a challenge for the Jeep to push its weight up in reverse, and it is also a challenge to kind of steer the Jeep around some of the bends. Eventually, we got to a point where we decided that reversing was no longer an option.
So guys, what you just saw there was kind of a mistake of not knowing where you're going. So we ended up coming down this trail up here, which is actually the wrong way on a red trail. Well, it might not be the wrong way, but it's still a red trail and we are not ready for the red trail. It gets a lot harder down there. So we decided to make a very tricky turnaround. Uh, that was pushing both of our nerves. I think she was <laughs> stressing out on that one. So we we're both stressing out on that and but enabled to do it pretty well. One thing that was pretty fun about that is once I started to lean in weird ways, I actually was able to adjust the Accuair to prevent the lean a little bit more. So I don't know how much that actually helped, but it definitely made me a little more comfortable. One thing to note that is interesting right now, if you look at the way it's sitting, I actually had to turn it off because when it was flexing that much out, the system kind of goes into a lockout system where it actually won't pump air into the certain cylinders anymore because there's a little bit of an obstruction or limitation with the sensor. So what I have to do is reset it and then hope we turn it back on and we're good to go. So guys, now what we're going to do is go up the red trail that we did and we're going to go back down the blue trail. So let's get going because I know... Someone's definitely had enough of trail yeah, for the day. Fine. So uh, time to move on and well, yeah, let's, let's do this and then we'll trail our way out. So see you guys at the end of this. All right, guys, as you can see, we made our way back through the blue trail. Unfortunately, this meant with the way this trail is designed, if you go a certain way on the trail, there's no exit. The only exit would be the red trail. So you actually have to come back along the blue trail, which isn't that bad, but it just was unexpected to us. We actually figured for some reason when the red 
and the blue came together, that that would have been the end, but it was not. So it meant we had to scoop back through and get on the road because we do have to get to Pigeon Forge today. So we are trying to get our way out. Right now, I'm letting her learn to off-road. First time she's ever done it and we're doing the, blue, the green trail. So I'm sure she's uh, nervous right now, and, you know, but. Overall guys, this trail is, I definitely recommend it. Really cool. There is a lot of versatility. There are some really cool views. There's some really cool obstacles to get through. You know, if you had the whole day to hang out and enjoy it, definitely worth it. If you had a bunch of friends with you and you were all capable to do the red trail, I think it'd be really cool. Cause even the part that we did by accident going down was actually really cool. And it was gonna get a little harder. So that's why we turned around. Um, yeah, guys, at this point, I recommend that you guys come and check out this trail. It's really worth it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything I've shown in this video, feel free to post them below. As usual, guys, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Keep evolving, and we'll see you guys on the next video.